Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this video we're going to take a look at simple list usage in Kotlin. The reason I want to show you this here is because it will help with your understanding of secondary constructors. So even though I'm going to make a section on what we call containers in Kotlin and we're going to look at lists in more depth there, in this particular video I want to show you basic list usage so that when we get onto secondary constructors that will make more sense. So a list is very much like an array, except you can change it. With an array, you've got a fixed list of items. You can't add more items or remove items. You can change the size of a list. And in fact, most of the time, rather than use an array, you would want to use a list. So let's look at a simple example. I'm going to say val, let's call this fruits, equals, and you might think that you would need list of, similar to array of. But in fact, we don't. Nevertheless, let's try it. Let's put in here an apple and a banana. And let's also try printing it to see what happens. So print line fruits. So let's run this. And we actually get a nice legible printout down here. So at the moment, it looks like an array. I could have done array of. And if I run this, we get something that isn't so easy to understand. The square bracket in the L indicates that it's an array and we've got the type of thing in the array and the hash code. So we'll go back to list off here. Now what I'd like to be able to do is add items to the list and we should do that using the add method. But here it's not going to work. Let's try it. Let's see if we can add a kiwi fruit to the list and you can see it's in red. That's not going to compile. In fact, list of by itself gives us an immutable list. What we want is mutable list of, which will give us a list that we can change. So let's get the syntax right here. So we've got mutable list of apple and banana. And if I run this, in fact, we can then add items to it. And just like with an array, you can access items via square brackets. So I could write here fruits, square bracket, and if we try to get item one, that would be banana. So if you run that, we get banana coming out down here. We can change the items if we want. So let's say fruit square brackets zero equals orange. That will change the apple to an orange. So if we run that, we can see we've now got orange instead of apple there. And we can iterate over it. So let's go down here and say four round brackets, make up a variable name like fruit in fruits, that's our list, curly brackets, and then we can do what we want with fruit. Let's say print line fruit. So if we run this, it's gonna print the fruits, each one on their own line. Here we go. So this is what we've got at the moment. We've created a mutable list of fruits. We've added a fruit to it. We can keep adding fruits if we want. We've seen that we can change items in this list. We can access items with this square bracket notation. If we print the whole list, it comes out in a legible format and we can loop over it in the same way that we can with an array. So the only things that are really different here with an array is that we can add items to the list and when we print it, it comes out quite nicely. Now let's take a look at what happens if we try to access an item that's not in the list. So at this point here, we've got three fruits in the list. We've got apple, banana, and we've added kiwi to the end. So those have indices 0, 1, and 2. Let's see what happens if we try to access an item at, let's say, index 3, which doesn't exist in this list. If I run this, we will get an index out of bounds exception, telling me that this index is out of bounds. The upper bound of it is 2. It can't be more than that. So this whole thing is called a stack trace. The top line here tells us the actual problem. And then if we go down line by line, we can find eventually a line that's in the code we've written. And if we click on that, it will take us to the problematic line. So let's comment this out because this is out of bounds. Now, what do we do if we want to start with an empty list rather than pre-filling it with some items? Let's delete the items here. And then we've got a problem. If we hover over the problem here, it says not enough information to infer type variable t. So the type variable t is the thing that tells us what type of thing is in the list. And we can only put one type of thing in a list. If we start off with an empty list like this, that's okay, but we have to say what type of thing we're planning to put in the list. 
And the way we do that is right after where it says mutable list of, we can put a pair of diamond brackets. So these are basically less than and greater than signs. And in there we put the type, which in this case is going to be string. Now let's check that all our indices are still within bounds. So we've added only one item here. We added Kiwi and then we changed it to orange. So the only index we've got that's valid, that's within bounds is actually zero, meaning we can't access one. So either I've got to delete this line or add another fruit. Let's add another fruit. We'll have Kiwi and pear. So now we added Kiwi and pear and we changed Kiwi to orange. So we should have orange and pear. Let's run this. And you can see we've got orange and pear. So here we're printing the second item at index one, the first items at index zero, which is pear. And then we're printing the whole thing, which gives us orange and pear. And then we're looping over it and we get orange and pear again. So that's it for this video. I think we've now covered enough to look at secondary constructors. So we'll probably tackle that in the next video. Until next time, happy coding.